if you'd have asked me that immediately after the game, uh, nothing, nothing would have consoled me, um, you know, after that, because I felt we'd played well enough in the first game uh, to beat Spurs. Spurs were uh, probably favourites, you know, certainly Ipswich were in the semi-final and we managed to, uh, we managed to beat them. I thought, I thought we outplayed Spurs in the, um, uh, in the, in the first game and we, you know, obviously disappointed um, uh, to only get a draw out of that. But um, yeah, it's a, I, I remember actually on the night the, we we had a, a reception at a hotel in London, and uh, Peter Swells was the chairman, and uh, he made a speech and he said, "Better to have been there and lost than not to have been there at all." And I thought, "What a load of cobblers!" Like, at the time, <laughs> but looking back on it now, uh, you know, I do think that. Um, you know, to get to a, a, an FA Cup semi-final and play uh, at Wembley and be introduced to a member of the royal family, which he hadn't been uh, before, the Queen Mother was uh, um, was a member of the royal family who uh, I escorted her down the down the line of players. I got told off for putting my arm around her back because uh, it's, it's time to mount to treason. Apparently, you know, I, I might have had a dagger in my hand or something. So you don't put your hand around the back of royalty ever. Uh, but nobody told me that before, so uh, so I, I had to take that on the chin. But yeah, yeah, I mean, it, you know, there's loads of things happen like those stories, um, you know, uh, on, on the way to Wembley, which is one of the greatest uh, moments in the in the English footballing calendar. And uh, as you say, yesterday, uh, unbelievable that um, after all these years of playing football, Manchester City and Manchester United have never competed in that competition at Wembley. I just watched it as a football match yesterday, but, um, you know, in, in certain quiet moments, sort of when I'm on my own and I uh, I think back and reflect on what I've done over my career and, um, you know, big games that I played in, and um, that will come top of the list. I, I used to see in the reception area at Main Road uh, pictures of Tony Buck on uh, being hoisted on the shoulders of uh, Alan Oakes and Glimpardo, I think it was, uh, when we when they won the uh, the FA Cup yeah. in 69. And, uh, you know, I would have absolutely loved there to be a picture of me doing the same thing uh, in a reception area somewhere at Main Road. But unfortunately, it wasn't to be. Uh, but no shame uh, to the team. Um, you know, for failing to do that. I thought what we achieved that year was fantastic. Uh, and uh, all the memories, the, the actual uh, being at the hotel the night before the game, uh, Bob Monkhouse was like the celebrity comedian at a dinner that we had there. Then we, you know, got travelling to the game uh, on the coach on the Saturday, going past all the bars that were full of uh, uh, blue and white um shirts and flags and, uh, you know, going out onto the pitch in our sort of Club Wembley suits, um, which I thought yesterday, looking at the two teams, I thought United were turned out a little bit sharper than us, but, but the modern day style, if you like, is to dress down, you know, City had uh, T-shirts and all the same, they looked a team. Uh, but we we had these pinside, uh, pinstripe suits on it. I've still got it. I've still got the suit upstairs. And um, still we're talking from 40 odd years ago, maybe now. So is that, still, suit, is that suit still, still fit? Yeah, <laughs> it does. It does actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so although my son once wore it to a crap suit party uh, at university, <laughs> you know. So, so there you go. You can't please all the people all the time, but. Yeah, yeah. Uh, memories all the time, sort of, um, when things happen that I see on the television, you know, uh, the memories come flooding back, all good ones. It took me years to get over the disappointment of losing that 81 Cup final because, you know, I, I, there was never any certainty City would do it again. And it shows how far we've come as a football club that it was part two of the treble. That's what everybody was saying. That's even the players after the game are going two down, one to go and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. you know, that shows how, how far this club has come, doesn't it? 
Oh, it's, it, it's absolutely unbelievable. My, my son works uh, for the football club now. Like, you know, he's, he's involved more uh, on the academy and the administration side. Nothing to do with the, uh, the playing or the coaching side at all. But uh, I'm absolutely proud to, to bits the, the fact that, you know, the power name is still associated with the club. Um, me during not particularly exciting periods, although we've talked about a few that um, uh, that I'll remember for the rest of my life. Uh, we've, I also suffered relegation against Luton Town, and you know, spent a couple of years in the in the second division. But then promotion again against Charlton Athletic was a great occasion. So you know, the 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 Power family has been littered with uh, with great moments, good and bad, of our association with Manchester City. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm thrilled with that. And Nicky, Nicky's actually coming here. Uh, for those that don't know, I live in France now, but uh, I live near a, a town called Narbonne in the in the south of France, about about sort of forty or forty five minutes away from the uh, Pyrenees. Lovely, lovely part of the world. And Nick is coming to, to spend a, a few days with his family. And then he's going to fly to Istanbul, Istanbul on Friday uh, from Toulouse. Um, and then, you know, he'll be at the game on Saturday. And unfortunately, uh, I, I won't be with him. But, uh, you know, I'll be having all fingers crossed, television channels switched on, uh, hoping that uh, they can emulate what only one other club has done you know, Manchester United, so, and the Alex Ferguson era, which I played through, and, um, you know, so, we think all fingers crossed, and uh, I believe that, that Pep has got it exactly right. When I, when I look at the bench on Saturday, and I see the talent that is on the bench, I mean, Phil Foden, I was, I was still employed by the club when we signed Phil Foden, Phil Foden as an eight-year-old, and um, he was the... Best player in the Northwest. Everybody wanted to sign Phil Foden. And, you know, full marks to uh, to Barry Pointman, Pointman, who was our recruitment officer, and Jim Cassell, who was the uh, academy director. Uh, we managed to get his signature above Man United, Everton, Liverpool, all the, all the clubs in the Northwest. Uh, and to see him now uh, flower into a fantastic young footballer. And not only that, a fantastic young man, and, a, and I think that is one thing about the manager, that he only has people in the dressing room that want to be there. You know, I've, I've played in teams where, you know, there's, there's been, we've had a squad, there's maybe been one player in the team and an equally good player who's been out of the team, mm. and maybe three or four good players that have been out of the team, and you find that those three players sort of get together and they think, and they sort of saying we're the, we're better than them, you know we we're good at, we we're, we're top players and we should be in the first team and then it creates an atmosphere in the dressing room. Well, I don't think Pep um, is he will tolerate that at all. You know he'll um, he'll just if anybody causes a problem in the dressing room they're off down the road. So Cancelo is a perfect example of that. You know, he's, he's allowed Jesus and uh, um, Zinchenko to go and improve the Arsenal team, but he's brought players in or he's used players that were already there, like Ake and uh, uh, Akanji. You know, they, they've fitted in perfectly and improved the team, um, you know, the, uh, as it is today. So I think he is a top, top manager, uh, only, only one in top personalities around the football club uh, and I, you know I, I get the impression from Nicky who, who works there that um, you know the the atmosphere around the dressing room and I see Harland and Grealish on the television and how how yeah. together they are it's absolutely fantastic yeah. look all the staff are involved Pep doesn't put himself first you know he, he, he puts himself down the queue and gives credit to uh, to everybody at the football club, even the, the, di the dinner ladies or whatever, you know, it's, it seems a fantastic atmosphere around the place. And I'm, I'm not a bit surprised that they're all enjoying the success together. 